Hey everybody, it's Mr. Clausen here. Um, just wanted to go over a sample constant velocity problem for you. Um, it's a little bit more of an advanced problem. However, it is totally within your skill set and I'm confident you'll be able to handle this classic physics problem. Um, the one we're going to be using is called the cheetah and the gazelle. Sometimes it's the two train problem or the cops and the robbers. Um, but essentially it just deals with two objects and dealing with the two meet up. Now at any point today if the video goes too fast, just like we always say, feel free to stop it and get down the information you need. Um, and then this is going to be really important that you take the time to actually run the calculations yourself or make sure that the algebra is making sense to you and not just waiting for me to go through it with you. Now I can't be there with you so you're on your honor to make sure you're hitting pause and doing this on your own um, and we'll get going. Alright, so here's the setup for um, how the problem works. All right, so we have a cheetah. He sees the gazelle, decides it's a good one to have for lunch, um, and then wants to run him down. Now, we know cheetahs are able to do this from time to time because uh, if they weren't able to catch the gazelles, there wouldn't be any cheetahs out there anymore to run after them. But occasionally, the gazelle is able to get away, and uh, the cheetah goes hungry that day. Now, we're going to make this problem a little bit simpler. We're going to assume that both animals are able to maintain their speeds, and we're not going to deal with any sort of zigzagging um, back and forth. So once they're up at speed, they're just going to maintain a constant velocity uh, and travel in a straight line path. And like I said, this is more about the physics, not necessarily about the biology uh, of the animals that are going on out there. So here's the setup. A cheetah can cover 300 meters in 10 seconds, and a gazelle can cover 150 meters in about 7 seconds. If both animals are running at full speed and the gazelle happens to have a 70 meter uh, head start, so it's 70 meters ahead, if slash when will the cheetah be able to catch his prey? Uh, so the way to go about this, with the information we're given, you'll notice in the problem that we're given a lot about the position and the times, so position and time, and so what we're going to be able to do there is we're going to be able to set up a position versus time graph to help us figure out what's going on. So copy this down in your notebook, get a graph popped up, and I'm going to pop one up here. It's going to be a big white screen, um, and there we go. So i got a position versus time graph set up, um, and let's start putting on the information we need to get on there. Okay, first piece of information is I'm going to use blue for the cheetah. Um, I'd say color code, it just makes it a little bit easier to understand which one's what, but blue stands for the cheetah in this problem. So let's go ahead and put in the cheetah's information. We know that the cheetah is going to be able to travel... Um, to a position of 300 meters from where he started, and it's going to take uh, the cheetah 10 seconds to do that. Okay, so if we go ahead and we figure out where that spot would be, I put a little dot there. Um, let me go ahead and start from zero and draw a nice straight line. Now, the one thing I should mention here is don't worry about these lines being drawn to scale perfectly. Uh, try and make them somewhat realistic, but it's mostly just to give us uh, a visual so we understand what we're doing with the mathematics. All right, so there's our cheetah's line. All right, now let's take a look at the gazelle. So I'm going to use red here. Here's red standing for the gazelle. And let's go ahead and put in the information. Now, the first thing we should note is that the gazelle does not start at zero like the cheetah did. The cheetah's got, or the gazelle's got a head start of 70 meters. So the starting position for the gazelle is going to be 70 meters. So we go ahead and we put that on here. Like I said, don't worry about it being 100% to scale. Just go ahead and pick a spot um, closer to the origin uh, for that. Now, looking at what the gazelle can do. The gazelle can cover 150 meters in 7 seconds. I'm trying to point to the problem above. Um, and what that means is the gazelle is going to be able to change his position of 70 meters. He's going to be able to change that position by 150 meters. Or, if you're following along at home, 70 plus 150 would be 220 meters. Now why is that important? We know that that's where uh, this right here is 150 meters, so that's where the, ch the gazelle is going to be with the information they gave us. And they said it would be 7 seconds. So they both started running at the same time, but we know that the gazelle is only going to take 7 seconds, and now they're going to be at a position of 220 meters, trying to get that close to the spot. So this is where the gazelle starts, this is where the gazelle is 7 seconds later, and believe it or not, that's all the information we need to figure out what's going on here. So if we go ahead and set this up so we can draw a line. Now like I said, sometimes if you don't quite get it to scale, don't worry about it. If your line crosses ahead of the 10 second mark, don't worry about it. Um, really this is just to prove to us that the lines will cross at some point. And so to answer the first question, is the cheetah going to be able to catch his prey? The answer is yes, provided that he can maintain his speed. 
All right, so what we see here is at this point in time, right here where the two lines intersect, what that represents is where the cheetah is able to get his lunch for that day. That's where the two meet. They are both occupying the same position, okay? And they're occupying that position at the same time as well. So now what we have is we know that there's going to be some time. We don't know what it is. And we know there's going to be a position. We just don't know what that is. All right, so how do we do this? We know they meet, we just don't know where. We have two unknowns. We have we don't know the time, and we don't know the position. We know it's going to be the same for both animals, but we don't know where that is. Well, if you remember back from algebra class, what do you do when you have two unknowns? How many equations do you actually need to solve for two unknowns? The answer is we need to have two equations. Now, it works out pretty well for us because we have two lines, so getting two equations is not too much work. Uh, the first one to do, to take a look at, would be uh, writing an equation for the cheetah. All right. So, to get an equation for the cheetah, we take a look at the cheetah's line. And since it's a straight line, we're going to put it in a uh, y, uh, slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. But instead of using those letters, we'll use the actual labels from the, the graph. So, the position, that's on our y, is going to be equal to the slope of the cheetah's line, um, multiplied by the x-axis, which in this case is time, plus the starting position, which I'm not going to put on there because the cheetah ends up starting from zero. And you notice I left the slope blank because we're going to go ahead and figure that out right now. What is the slope for the cheetah's line? Well, it's not too hard to figure out. Slope is position divided, or change in position divided by time. So the cheetah went 300 meters. It took the cheetah 10 seconds to do that. So this means that the cheetah is able to cover 30 meters every second that he's traveling, otherwise known as this is the velocity uh, of our cheetah. So we go ahead and put that in. Our cheetah has a velocity of 30 meters per second. It's able to travel 30 meters in one second. Pretty impressive. All right, let's take a look now at what the equation would be for the gazelle. So I'm switching over to red. Same deal. The y is going to be the same this time, though. It's the uh, position is going to be equal to the slope, all right, for the gazelle, um, multiplied by time plus the y-intercept, or the starting position. So if we take a look here, the gazelle actually starts at 70, so that's important. We need to leave that on there like so. So how do we go ahead and figure out the slope for the gazelle's line? I'm going to use a little bit of a shortcut. Rather than finding the total slope, some of the ways we do, remember that velocity is change in position divided by time. So let's use this little shortcut that they told us in the problem. We know that there's 70 and 220 there, and you're more than welcome to calculate the slope that way, but there's a little bit of a shortcut. We know that he changes his position from here to there. That's 150 meters. So his displacement is 150 meters. And how many seconds does it take for that to happen? Well, according to the problem, it takes seven seconds. So if you go ahead and you get your calculator out, which you should do, you would take 150 divided by seven, and what you get is a velocity of 21 point make sure I get this right here, 4.2 meters per second. So the gazelle isn't quite as fast as the cheetah. The gazelle can only cover 21 meters every second. Not so good when you're trying to run away from something that wants to eat you. All right, but we get back to the physics now here, and we have two equations and two unknowns, and this is where we're able to finally start figuring out what's going on. Now remember, what we're going to do here is it's very important that at this point in time, the position for both animals would be the same. That means that this x would be the same as that x. So this brings me up to my favorite thing for mathematics, which says that if a equals b and b equals c, we go ahead and we can say that a equals c. Uh, so let's go ahead and what that means is here is that the blue x is going to be equal to the red x. Okay. So if we set the two equations equal to each other, you would get something that looks as follows. So instead of using x for the blue x, I'm going to write 30 meters per second multiplied by time is going to be equal to, and then we go ahead and write our equation for the gazelle, 21.42 meters per second times time plus the 70 meters. Okay. Now we have an equation, we've got to start simplifying this a little bit. Um, here's the easiest way to do it. We're just going to do a little bit of algebra. Now, what we want to do is get the t's on both sides. The way to do that in this case is we just go about um, 
simplifying them down. So the way to do it is since this is being added to 70, all we do is we subtract off 21.42 meters per second t. And I know that sounds like a lot, but think about it this way. What if you had 3x and 2x? What you would do is you would subtract um, 2x from 3x, you'd get 1x. And so what we do over here is we just subtract this off. And since they both have the same variable at the end there, we can just go ahead and subtract that. So what's 30 minus 21? What you end up getting is the number 5.58 meters per second, and that would still be t. All right, now since our equation no longer is um, gonna be there, I'm just gonna write the same thing going on. So this is now gone. The only thing we have left over there is 70 meters. All right, so now how do we end up solving for t? Uh, hopefully a lot of you are ahead of me already. Divide both sides by 5.58 meters uh, per second. All right, and what you'll end up getting then is 70 divided by 5.58. So I encourage you to figure that out on your own uh, and come back here and hopefully what you'll get is the number 12.5 seconds. Now, I showed how we did the calculations here, but it's really important that you go back and do this yourself. So now, what does this tell us? This tells us that the time that the two animals meet is about 12 and a half seconds after they first spot each other, okay? Um, now, the next question is where? What is the position they meet at? Well, now that we know what the time is, remember up here we have two equations that's explaining what's going on. What we can do with this time and right there, what we can do is we can plug it into either equation. Now me, I don't like doing a lot of extra work, so I'm going to pick the equation that's a little bit shorter, and you can take a look, that's the one that we had for our cheetah, because it's only got that going there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that time and plug it in to figure out what position the two animals would meet at. So the position is equal to 30 meters per second multiplied by the time. Now this time, like I said, now what we're going to do is we're going to use that 12.5. So we put that in there, 12.5 seconds. Uh, seconds will cancel with seconds, leaving us with just meters, which is perfect. And then all you have to do is run that through on your calculator. 30 times 12.5 is 375 meters. So what that tells us is that in order for the cheetah to catch the gazelle that had that little bit of a head start, he's going to have to run out a distance of 375 meters. Uh, so now we know that this position is 375 meters for our unknown x. Now, pretty impressive when you think about it, that that cheetah is not only able to run that quickly, but he's able to cover 375 meters, and it only takes him 12 and a half seconds to do that. Um, but there you go. That's an example of how you'd be able to calculate where and when two objects are going to meet up. What we do is we write two lines for each one. We find the point where they meet. We realize what this means is that their positions are going to be set equal to each other, as well as their times are going to be equal to each other. Set the two equations together. We do some algebra magic. We solve for one of the variables, and then we plug in for the other. If you have any questions, um, I'll be around, and I will see you in class.